Just take your sweet time, old lady. I've got all day. So last week I said something that was unbelievable. Games. I typically get most kills with every class I play. Yes, even the scout. And some of you were thinking, From where I sit, your unorthodox methods are indistinguishable from chance. And your results, perfect or not, look suspiciously like luck. While some others were thinking, Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. You're not that guy, pal, trust me. You're not that guy. Well, I'm not, and it's not luck either. So that means that everyone can do this. I'm on a crusade to redeem the scout. So I'm gonna post as many videos as I can joining random missions already started and getting incredible numbers. Throughout all these different missions, I use the same techniques every time, which I'll be showing you today. And for the majority of people who don't watch this video, you're gonna be left behind as waves of scouts start leading in numbers in Deep Rock Galactic. Let's change the game and make every other class step up theirs. Rock and Stone! Bacall! Rock and Stone to the bone! Leave no dwarf behind! I can't feel my fears! Ah! We're all gonna die! Rock and stone! Rock and stone, brother! Rock and stone to the bone! For the sake of time, I'm not gonna focus on alternate builds or how important roles can be in Deep Rock. Instead, I'm simply gonna show you what I do, and if you do the same, you should have similar results. So first, we have to create some new habits for the scout. You know when we're out there gathering resources and those ambushes come for us? Not swarms, just a small spawn of enemies. Well, typically the scout zips away, as I've done for a long time, and that's the first habit we have to change. If you're trying to get minerals and enemies are in your way, now you're gonna just wipe them out. You see, these ambushes can spawn near any class, it just so happens that as scout, it seems I get ambushes constantly. And in most of these circumstances, I'm alone or up on the ceiling. So unless there's a gunner right there giving you cover fire, you either have to run away or kill them. But if you spend too much time killing bugs, you're getting behind on other things. So it's important to be efficient, not only in gathering minerals, but how quickly you can dispose of the bugs so you can get back to gathering minerals. And this is how I do it. When you hear or see the enemy, you first must position yourself so the enemies have to fall in line in order to get to you. A straight kind of line like this. Whether on the wall or ground, you will see the enemies doing this all the time. And when they are in a line, you're gonna use your primaries blow through rounds to try and make one bullet do as much damage as possible. So it's important that when they are on a line, you're shooting them one in front of another like this. Easy and quick kills. Finish the bugs off and go back to mineral gathering. Doing this alone will already increase your kills more than you think. You see, I've noticed how not everyone is getting ambushes all the time. It's often just me on my own when I'm gathering minerals. So I'm getting the kills that the rest of the team may not necessarily have the chance to get. If only one ambush spawns and it's near me, well, those are my kills now. Like I said, unless another class is covering my back, in which case they'll most likely have the most kills. But that's another masterclass video. For now, as Scout, if you get used to doing that and you haven't been before, that will already make a huge difference in your numbers. Now, I like to think that each character has a priority list of things to do. And each list has all the same items, except in different orders based on class efficiency. For example, getting Nitra on the ceiling should be higher on a scout's priority list than any other class. Just as a gunner shouldn't be digging a refinery tunnel as the driller is focused on killing bugs, it all comes down to who's the most efficient at the job. I'll go into that in great detail in my elite deep dive walkthrough. But for now, the point I'm making is that as a scout, the more efficient you are at getting minerals, the more time you have for kills or mission objectives. So wait a minute, the more efficient you are at gathering minerals means the more time you have to get kills and participate in everything else going on. If you take too long getting resources, you're never gonna get the kind of numbers I do. So that is why for over two years now, I've been using both resource points in my build so I can carry up to 60 of every mineral. 
Think of all the time I save going back and forth, when now I can get Nitra, Morkite, and Gold all in one without even having to go back for leftovers. As you will see in my upcoming gameplay videos, I'm not flying around looking for kills. I'm looking for resources. I want the most minerals by far, because as soon as I have them, I can move on to everything else. And it's pretty impressive when you have a buttload of minerals and a lot of kills, and every scout has the capability of doing it. The next technique I use, and you may need to practice with, is snap grappling. Snap grappling is making instant directional movements without aiming or focusing on the location. Because of the range on this build, you have the highest chance of connecting your grapple no matter where you look. So when things get hairy, I can move out of danger in any direction without needing to take the extra second to line anything up. Or like here, when I fell and just looked up and shot. This is something I'm constantly doing, so I do recommend training with it a little bit just to get used to the recharge rate and the distance it can go and some of the smaller nuances of the build. I would go into a Hazard 5 Aquark mission without Bosco or with Bosco, just make sure you get Bosco to pick up an Aquark or something so he's not shooting at all the bugs. Stay in the drop pod, let a nasty horde kind of build up and then get as close as you can to the swarm and start zipping out of the way, left, right, up, wherever, just to get used to those quick movements. Don't kill any bugs, just try and stay alive. I mean, I'm at the point now where I feel like I could go forever and not die sometimes, so it's possible, but it might take a tiny bit of getting used to if you're typically used to aiming your grapple with much more precision. Check out how I use this grapple to keep me alive in an almost certain death situation. The horde in this elite deep dive was insane, and on top of it, I had a detonator and a dreadnought at the same time. It's a four-man elite deep dive, and I'm alone. but I didn't go down. I actually killed the detonator and held off the dreadnought until my team arrived. And honestly, it's all thanks to the way I use my grapple. Now we actually lost that mission, but I'm still very proud of my numbers and clearly I'm doing something right. But I know for those skeptical, you're gonna need to see the entire gameplay video from beginning to end with probably little to no editing at all, just so you can see what I'm up to in these missions. Am I starting a mission and someone's joining late or, you know, what's going on? So definitely keep an eye out for that. But for now, we still got a few more techniques to get down. And the next one is definitely going to take some hazard one practice. How to get minerals without a platform. I mean, weird angles, high up on the ceiling, anywhere really. It's not that engineers aren't putting platforms up. They are. It's just I want to get them as soon as possible and not wait around. So I do this constantly in every scout video, so you'll have tons of examples. The trick is to use your hover boots at the peak of your grapple. Power axe charge, and then pickaxe up. Usually before your third pickaxe attempt, you will start to fall at the same time as your grapple recharges. So if you aim up where you were just pickaxing as you fall, you will just grapple up to that ledge that you've just made. And that's the whole purpose for pickaxing up, is that you're already aiming at it, so you don't have to like, you know, try and aim really quickly as you're falling. You're already looking where you need to aim. So to recap, it's grapple, hover boots, power axe charge, pickaxe up, then fall, and grapple. And like I said, if you grapple where you're just aiming, you're gonna go up on the ledge. And that's it, I've been doing this now for long enough that I rarely mess it up, but it can happen, and it was hard to get it down. Something even like the speed of your grapple propelling you into the wall too fast is gonna bounce you off the wall, so make sure you've got the same build as me when you're trying this. Another kind of side thing here is hover boots are a great way to recover from a potential fall, or not only that, I often use it to just get off the ground where no melee enemies can get to me. That way my shield has a chance to actually recharge and I can focus on a range enemy for a quick second before zipping away. As far as heightened senses go, I would love to say use whatever you want because that's usually how I see this game, but let me ask you, are you really going to get higher numbers if cave leeches and grabbers are downing you? Definitely not. That's such a loss of time. Make no mistake, I'm a busy scout, constantly doing shit. If I go down off on my own, that's a loss of time that'll affect my numbers to a point where heightened senses would just simply keep me alive and doing things longer. Now I know quick revive is amazing, especially for scout. So if you do run a quick res build, that is great and super helpful. I'm in no way saying that this is the only way to run the scout. I hope I can make that very clear. I can think of three other efficient builds on the top of my head that are very different from this. All I can show you is what I'm doing to get these results so others can do the same. The next technique is with the Zukov build and a little bit of born ready. 
When I run out of ammo, I switch to my secondary. I can kill bugs rather than just reloading, which is increasing your DPS throughout the entire mission. Not to mention the fact that even when you're pickaxing things, all your items still reload. Not that you're always going to switch when you run out of ammo, it's really up to you when you do that. For me, I like to switch back and forth based on how much ammo I'm using, so I don't just run out of my primary. The other thing is the way you use this gun. Because of the burst of speed, this is a great build for backing up or dodging while shooting. And another thing about this gun is I try to hit multiple enemies with my Zukov. It doesn't take much to kill a grunt, so it's kind of overkill if you're unloading too many bullets in one enemy. I like to spray that thing like it's a Tommy gun and I'm a gangster from the 1920s. Not only is it obviously effective, but the Zukov destroys goo bombers and oppressors, and even those rocks hardly need any ammo at all for them to explode. It's surprisingly powerful. So get used to this build if it's a little tough. I found it a little hard at first, but now I'm kind of killing groups of enemies at ease with it, so just one of those things you have to practice with. One way I use fear effectively is particularly when there's a Praetorian in the mix. If I can get a fear kill, the Praetorian will turn, exposing the weak spot. I use it for a few other reasons, but honestly, this last section could go either way. I don't depend on fear, but it does have its uses. Alright guys, the next part is up to you. How fast can you gather minerals versus me? Are you lighting up the cave so you can find things faster? Are you collecting as much as you can or running back and forth to Molly constantly? I sincerely believe that the major part of me being able to get a high kill game is actually mineral efficiency. So let's say by this next step, you've already got that down. So moving forward, we're assuming there are no more minerals left in either the current room you're in or the entire cave. So now you're gonna focus a little bit more on kills just like everybody else is doing while doing the mission objective, of course. And this is how. First things first is understanding target acquisition priority. And I believe everybody should be doing this for every class. If I have a focus shot build, I shouldn't be focused on grunts or swarmers. It should be oppressors, spitters, and those types of enemies. While a carpet bomber could easily clean up the grunts. So if I was running the focus shot build, I can still kill grunts, but they should be lower on the list than tougher enemies. Same goes for every build. What you need to focus on for this build are enemies in a straight line, plain and simple. So when you're in the mission, got all the minerals, you're looking around maybe for some inner pearl or you're setting up a pipeline and you hear a group of enemies or you see a group of enemies and they're in a line, the advantage you have over every other class is your mobility. You can physically grapple ahead of everyone else and get to those bugs before them. Being able to get there first really does count for something. Repeating this throughout the entire mission will truly stack up a lot of kills. And like I said, you don't have to just be waiting for them. You can still look for secondary objectives or, or really just be helpful in any other way. And then when they spawn, whether you hear or see them, just go get them. You see, what people don't realize is that the scout's mobility actually enables you to get more kills. A really good example of this is an upcoming video where I joined a high level group of players. They're already about 10 minutes into the game and the mission had tons of swarmer spawners and there was a driller in the group. Most of the swarmer nests were already destroyed as I was very late in the game so I couldn't even catch up. But as it turns out, the scout in the party was so good at gathering resources that I couldn't even find any. So I was able to just focus on kills for the rest of the mission. And guys, I still got the most kills. How? Mobility, once again, saves the day. The scout can zip up to all kinds of swarmer nests that others can't reach as fast. If you time it right, you can get a ton of kills with a cryo grenade, and even use your primary to get a ton of kills. I'm only doing what everyone else is doing on the ground, but I'm getting the ones on the walls. And imagine if I started this game with them 10 minutes earlier. I would have been able to potentially zip ahead and get the ones on the ground too, surpassing everybody even further in kills. And if I didn't do that, they end up ambushing me anyways when I'm gathering minerals. The full gameplay video on that is coming. I'm sad that I wasn't able to get enough minerals, but honestly, this team was so skilled that it wasn't surprising. They were on top of it, and I literally couldn't find any when I tried. These guys knew what they were doing, and honestly, that's the kind of team you want to bump into. Forget about competition. It's a PvE game, and when everyone is on point, it's a great experience. I don't even care if I don't get the most kills, to be honest. But I'm trying to make a point here, especially when I'm giving you all a head start. And that point is 
the way that people see and play Scout needs to change. Other classes have some extremely powerful weapons and equipment. The Scout makes up for that with mobility. But most people think that just means getting out of danger and getting to minerals. But what about getting into danger? No one can stop the Scout from zipping to a line of grunts or swarmers nest somewhere and destroying them before anyone has a chance. And the great thing is, you don't even have to abandon other mission objectives to do this. You can very easily get tons of minerals and tons of kills simply because of speed and efficiency. What's the rule of thumb for swarms? I mean, what I've been doing and what's smart to do is find your local driller or team member and kill the swarm together. It is a four-man swarm after all. But what we scouts need to start doing to represent that we can bring more than just light and mineral gathering is to face the swarm alone. That's right, alone. I know a lot of people were expecting me to say, go to the driller and steal all the cryo kills. But listen, everyone's in the same game. Everyone has the same opportunities. A gunner can just as well take the cryo kills or find his own group of enemies to go kill. There is no rule here that prevents the scout specifically from doing that. So I think it's a pretty bad argument, but even better, we don't need them. Keep your cryo kills. So when you hear the swarm is coming, I want you to zip off about 50 to 100 meters away from your crew. Close enough to still get back to them should you need to. When the swarm spawns, instead of an entire swarm trailing down to everyone in one spot, groups will now branch off and find you, giving you your own group of enemies to kill while your team is killing the rest of the swarm. So to be clear, you're taking a chunk of the swarm for yourself. Zip around, line up the enemies, Use cryo grenades, whatever you have to do, but do not go down, not here. Go down anywhere else, but do not go down while you're doing this because then you're a burden to the team because they're facing a four man swarm and you're too far away to revive and that's just not helpful. So if you're struggling during this part, zip back to your team and everything will be fine. I would go back and I would practice zipping around and just practice a bit because guys, I miss all kinds of shots. I'm not that good. I'm not Jason Bourne, like I said. So I really sincerely believe that everybody can do this. It just might take a little bit of practice. Now there is a small chance, I'd say maybe like one out of 10, that nothing spawns near you or even heads in your direction. It's rare, but it has happened to me. And when it does, you're likely going, you know, not gonna get the most kills, but who really cares? As long as you're all passing the mission, you should be happy. And as for the rest of the time, you'll most definitely get a large group of enemies spawning around you. So doing this will make an incredible difference for all of us scouts. And because this is representing Deep Rock Academy, please keep all the caves well lit and your resource numbers high because that's the first thing everyone is going to assume you're not doing if you get a lot of kills. So it's important to give them nothing to complain about. Instead, they'll be wondering if you're hacking or something. Okay, I know I've just thrown a bunch of different things at you about builds and techniques and so on and so forth. So other than practicing the individual techniques on their own, the way you wanna do this practically in a mission with your friends or with randoms is actually way more simple than it might seem. All you want to do is focus on getting as much resources as efficiently as possible, using this build, of course. Efficiency meaning speed primarily. Everything else I've said will just start making more sense even if you only focus on that one thing. Because if you do, and you get better at it, it'll teach you flare mechanics. Because that's the key to getting minerals fast and spotting enemies. It will also teach you things like continuing to mine the minerals so you don't have to when you come back. Or using techniques to get to places without needing platforms. And really a lot more. As a result, you're gonna have way more spare time on your hands. Time for kills mission objectives, searching for events, whatever you want to do with that time. So if you just start there, and of course tune in for my example gameplay videos using these techniques, you're gonna have no problem nailing this. And the last thing I need to say before I close out is that you know how my videos usually go. I really enjoy going over other kind of small details and other nuances and different builds and things you can do, like with the grapple and how it actually makes a sound so you know when it's recharged, you don't even have to look. So a lot of that kind of stuff I had to leave out because of the burden of proof that I have to show you how I'm doing this. So I hope that's okay, and if it's not, then fuck ya. Yeah. Ah, just kidding. Or am I? Now subscribe and like or die.